new sweats. Uh. Working hard, got two jobs, Friday night, but thank you Lord, it's two checks. It's two checks, two checks, yeah. Game of spades, being a flight, I'm talking ten straight books, you got damn right, now who's next? Yeah, off my table. Who's next, who's next? Yeah. Huh? I don't dance a boogie, somebody tell a DJ, put on my song, we grown and we want a two-step. We want a two-step. Um, that's, that's, the the that's the new flex. That's the new flex. Yeah. Two-step to this, two-step to this, two-step everybody come on. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dragon Riders Media. I'm your host, Dragon Rider, baby. <laughs> and today, man, I got a very, some very special guest, man. Hey, I've been trying to get these people on the channel for a couple years now, man. And, um, man, I'm pretty excited, man. If y'all don't already know, man, hey, these guys are from the Sky Path community, man. And the, the team, dude, these guys are rocking it. If you ain't been paying attention, look, I'm going to tell you what. I'm OG Sky Path. If you ain't been paying attention to Sky Path for a while now, you are missing out on something fantastic. In my opinion, this is not financial advice, but it's advised that you listen to some information. But anyway, here we go to the stage. We got Omar Shans and Up Up Crypto, man. What is going on, guys? What's up, my man? What is up, man? This is this is this is a very exciting day for me, man. Look, oh, man. hopefully we got your extra height with some uh <laughs> with some info <laughs> Dude, you guys you guys are killing it man and you know it's it's great to finally finally get uh get you guys on the channel so we can so we can get get into some stuff man so, man you guys are great dude the the, the amount of 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 the, the utility behind the tech is nuts and there's a lot of people that aren't paying attention because they they looking for the next pp or doo-doo or whatever the case may be they looking for all that garbage instead of <laughs> instead of looking towards tech man because tech is the future especially blockchain tech Ooh. oh yeah. yeah man deep in mm. real world assets i think you know tr trust me I, I i look for some of the doo-doo too though so i, I understand <laughs> <laughs> but man, you have got to you you got to have a small amount of doo doo in your bag. But the Absolutely. rest of it needs to be serious. It needs to be serious. Absolutely, I always say ninety ninety percent, uh, you know, serious blue chips, whatever you want to call it. You got ninety percent long term investments. You got ten percent bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Omar, you muted, man. I, can you hear me? There we go. I think the funny thing about it, we most people that got into the space don't even know what a blue chip is, right? They might know what a layer zero, layer one is. They don't understand, like, you got so far products, you got stuff that hasn't even been built on chain, like, similar to what we're yeah. doing. And it's hard for them to kind of get into that because most of the influencers, unlike you, who, who are super dope, I know you in real life, you're an amazing person, you work hard. You understand this stuff, what the world, what crypto, what DeFi, what blockchain is trying to migrate to long term. And I want people yeah. to, and like, if I could just show people like all the manipulation and the bull crap that we see on the daily, it would change your perspective because everybody's not going to make a million dollars off another shit, but those, those days are done because so much manipulation and bull crap behind these projects, you know, Absolutely. If, like if you get to a billion dollar market cap, what's the odds of it to a $2 billion market cap and you got into the billion dollars, you put a hundred dollars in, which the most you can do is double your money. It doesn't make yeah. sense from that standpoint, but is this dope? I mean, the blockchains are doing really well. These networks, they're making a lot of fees and mass adoption is coming. Had we had a conversation three years ago, you would never see an ETF, a Ethereum ETF, another stuff, right? But now you're starting to see wow. this. Right? So I'm excited. And I think we're definitely going to shake a lot of um, heads and we're going to show people that when you're building something that's really dope, that solves real world problems and make it easier. Oh, man, mass adoption is coming. So that's why we have like Jason coming on board. And that's why we, you yeah. know, we trust you man we, we try to surround ourselves around great people and i wish people could get hear some of the conversations that we have we would do we'd be at a billion dollar market cap <laughs> ching, 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 ching. <laughs> man if people if people could see just our emails we we could just do a snippet of just some of the emails that we have back and forth from a company perspective and people would just yeah. go they'd be shocked at just the emails but we, well we, here, here go ahead my friend 
Well, I was going to say, here's here's the problem, man. Like, you know, like we say, you know, a lot of the new investors and a lot of the just just straight DJs, man, are they're looking to, to you know, two X, three X on on some some random garbage that's here to get here today, gone tomorrow. And, you know, they're not necessarily looking for, you know, the, the, the whole excitement thing only lasts so long. The hype only lasts so long you know so then you got to be like okay well after the hype this token's gone but you know when you're talking about something that, that you know a, a, a or excuse me a business i gotta stop saying project a business that is actually building some stuff they have real world utility along with that that's when you start looking like okay let me start looking at this as as something that's going to potentially go the mile because not everything's going to go the mile but just because you're quiet, just because there's not a whole lot of, ah, and hey, look at me, you know, doesn't mean that it's not worth looking at. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, a lot of people, you know, and that's why I like to do what I do is to to point people in a direction of 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 the stuff that the unseen, the quiet ones that are actually doing some things. You know what I mean? Appreciate you. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, one of the things, um, you know, I've been, in, I've actually been in the tech startup and high growth space for a long time, north of twenty years. I, I'm getting on up there in age. Um, <laughs> I was actually a young vice president for a vice president of sales for a company that went public way back. Uh, became a billion dollar public publicly traded company. So I've got a lot of experience, um, you know, in high growth startups. And and one yeah. of the things that we always have preached is tech. Team, tech and team like you know one of the things and i'm kind of old school when i talk about things like i love the crypto and stuff and the in nfts and the excitement and the fun and i'm like all about gaming and nfts and gaming and i can't wait because i want to do all that stuff because that's fun yeah. and i'm i'm excited about the metaverses and all the futuristic stuff coming but at but the, at the same time i approach all this stuff from an old school kind of mentality and so whenever I look at projects and companies and, and all that stuff, I always try to preach like team and technology, like who's the team behind what you're building? Um, and, and then what is the what's the technology that they're building? And, and don't let it, you know, don't let it get, don't get it twisted. Like everybody in the Web3 space is that it is technology. So what is the technology? Is it, you know, is it wh wh where is it taking us from? A next level perspective and can that team get you to that next level um you know long term because like you just said here today gone tomorrow i've you how many tokens i was looking at some numbers and i've published some numbers you know in the startup space people always talk about you know 90 like 95 percent of startups fail and and that's been around for a long time people have said that for a very long time and so in in the web three space you hear a lot of these same things over and over and over like you hear 95 percent of all cryptos fail and and the reason that you hear that is because somebody said it and then everybody repeats it but that's actually not true at all the the failure rate is pro is closer to a hundred percent it's actually probably 99.99999 percent and you you look at these numbers because you know, if you look at like Binance and some of these big chains, there have been hundreds of thousands of projects and NFTs and tokens that have launched on these chains, hundreds of thousands on one chain. How many tokens and projects can you name me on 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 in Binance in their ecosystem that are ultra successful? You know what I mean? Like it's only a small handful. So then you're thinking like, wait a minute, can I name five? maybe can i name 10 probably not so you're talking about like five out of two hundred and fifty thousand on one network so the failure rate is really really massive in the space and so then you look at like okay um you know that that's why i always encourage you and 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 people that are looking investing and why i'm you know i'm super excited about skypath because the team is massively significant massively significant and the technology is a life-saving technology um, that is is desperately needed. It's a technology that it doesn't matter where you are on the globe can be utilized, and it's an easy it's easy to get behind. It's an easy narrative to get behind. You know who who doesn't want to have who doesn't want to support something like this? So I think yeah. it makes sense. Okay. Well, before we get into skies, let's get a little background on on 
the men behind Sky. So, hey, man, we start off with Omar, man. How did you get into, you know, how'd you get into the Web3 space? So, long story short, not, you know, my, I'm a little different from anybody else. I just want to put that out there. I just was fortunate enough to understand, you know, blockchain technology because I was a, actually a bank compliance officer, right? And I believe it started in 2017. Um, I got into like all the layer zero, layer ones, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Monero, you know, yeah. like, this is pretty cool because if we can transcend funds instantaneously, like XRP to all over the world, man, that solves the problem. Because if you send a wire, yeah. it could go to the wrong, you know, account, your money is gone. I'm like, dude, this is immutable. You can track it. Dude, this is dope. Um, yeah. So I tried to get into like the blue chips, right? You know, and I like that help. I seen the first like the run up in twenty seven in December twenty seventeen. Right, I'm like, oh my god, you can make money into this. Then it just felt my like it, it fueled me to want to learn it. And I was telling all my friends like, hey man, you need to go buy Bitcoin. It's like at three thousand dollars. It's a low under ten k. And you know, it's like understood it. Like I looked at the supply, I understood because I was a bank guy, right? Yeah. And uh, I started looking into the DJ and stuff. I'm like, hold up, what is DeFi? Like, how is this stuff decentralized? It didn't make sense to me because I knew that you had an on ramp and all this stuff. Then from that point on, I really started to research it, what blockchain technology was, and I knew for a fact this is the future, right? And I started looking when the first cryptocurrency was made, and I want people to understand what DigiCash is and all the people behind this stuff. Mm -hmm. what Bitcoin popped up out the blue. No, this stuff been going on since the late 90s, guys. And um. Mm -hmm. so Nakamoto and, and everything behind Bitcoin. I'm like, oh man, this is going to take off because you got people actually pushing it, right? And they trying to enforce it. Um, then after that, I, I you know, got into eToro. I was a top trader in eToro. They actually had my picture plastered on the website. I actually get paid from eToro. Um, then after that, I got an opportunity to build the fraud program for Uphold on uh, the BSA AML fraud program for the UK, EMA, and US. Um, and from that point on, man, it's just I just knew this was the future, right? And I knew any kind of resistance from people, they don't want to change. But when you start seeing the big boys come in, you start regulations start to come in, you see companies start to accept it, you better get on that ship first because this is to transfer generational wealth. Then from that standpoint, I got into the DeFi stuff. I think my first major DeFi play was SHIB, right? I made a little money in SHIB, not a lot, but I'm like, oh man, this is super cool. It was, it felt unreal, right? Like, hold up, $100 turned to $2,000. This can't be real. Then um, that just felt me, then, you know, because I was a blue chip guy, and I started to see all the scams and all this stuff. But when I knew that, oh, this is real, because anytime I got a public company like Coinbase that's starting to get wireless and get into DeFi, they're going to onboard you in KYC. This is not going anywhere. And um, that's when I knew, like, man, this is it for me. And how I got to Sky, actually, um, knew one of their previous employees who brought me on board. And I met David, and I kind of said, hey, man, what you guys are building, you can put this on chain. Um, just think about because blockchain is pretty much a server or a cloud server. You, you know, it's just house data. And most people, yeah. don't, right? They think it's some convoluted. What's the block? They they won't even know. They tell you it's immutable, a track. They don't know exactly what it is, how you connect the API to a blockchain, right? And house the data on it, right? And um, from that point on, you know, I, I worked myself up, became the president of the company. And um, I tried to find this great people. And I seen Jason. I'm like, oh, man, I, I, I like this guy. He has the experience. And He's like us. He he sees the vision. He knows like it's not going to be easy. People are going to doubt you. And once I brought him on board and kind of seen behind the scenes of all the actual stuff that we are doing and the people that we deal with, he was on board. But that was just how I got to. And Jason, you go ahead. What would I mean? You get you know my high level. What I've been into, man. And okay. It's so many opportunities on my way. I mean, let me go back even a second. People, I had an opportunity with with Meta to help with that Demi project. Guys, remember that their stable coin. I turned that down. I had Gate.io reach out to me for the chief compliance officer position. I turned it down, you know, because I know they couldn't wow. get this and stuff in the U.S. I understand this stuff, right? Because look at now, the, U the SEC said now, well, no, it's a unit swap. And, and look at that parent company and Robinhood and Coin. I understand this stuff because if you go back to 2008 with the financial crisis and the Dodd-Frank Act was implemented, it's the same thing. They go after the big boys, enforce the regulations, and everybody else have to conform to it. So I see that. So I'm like, hey, we gonna get before it. We gonna get ahead of this, and we gonna rock it out because all these mean coin stuff that's gonna die eventually. You know, because yeah. two is coming through. You can't start a business and nobody know who the hell you are. But these people aren't smart enough to understand when you take that money off chain. You got to usually go to a damn CEX. They flag you. I work at CEX. I understand this, 
Anyway, that's enough. I ain't gonna tell people. I'm gonna continue. <laughs> to do. I know what they're doing. You know, it's unregulated. Have fun, but come on, man, do people the right way. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, one thing that I always that I always uh, talk about, and I think that, um, you know, having an Omar and his background and experience in what he does is unbelievably underestimated. And the reason that I say that is because, you know, when you're trying to grow a company and build a business, you're not just thinking about like what you're doing today. Like, I'm not thinking about like, hey, I, you know, what am I doing on this, you know, podcast and live stream today? We're thinking about like, all of the obstacles that are going to potentially be in front of us over the next two, three years. And so, you know, um, we, in crypto right now, we're in this kind of, this really um, gray area from a regulatory standpoint, et cetera. And Omar and I have had these conversations, like all the, we have these conversations all the time. And the reality of it is, is that you have to be, you have to be ready for whatever happens regardless and so you know could the could the government say hey all this stuff is a security or could the government um you know start handing out fines or there's so many things that can and, and will happen and so i think you know one of the things that you're going to start seeing in crypto very very fast and it's going to be because because you just you see today like look at you know trump he came out and supported crypto after RFK supported crypto. And then guess who came out 30 minutes later and said, hey, I want crypto too. You know, you've got Biden. He, he wants crypto. And so like then you start you have to think like, how are we going to make it safe as quick as possible? And so you're going to so the government is really going to start putting their hands in the cookie jar now. Yeah. So you have to be ready for anything. And one of the ways to make be one of the ways to to um to make crypto more safe is to is to clamp down on regulations meaning register as a business register as an entity completely docs etc and so you're going to see um you, you know i i've seen the argument where people are like oh well they you know there's thousands and thousands of people making crypto they they can't uh they can't regulate all those folks they can't dox all those folks and the answer is 100% yes, they can. And you know how they do that? Through the DEXs and through the, through the, the centralized exchange. You telling me that if the government says, hey, Mr. Uniswap owner, if you don't dox all of your projects, you're going to owe us $10 million in, in fines. Guess what's going to happen? Then overnight, Uniswap will shut down whoever doesn't dox. And that was a very long-winded way to say that having an Omar on your team who can who can bring you through the regulatory uh, challenges and already be thinking of that is is massive for the holders because there's nothing that can possibly happen in the landscape in this ecosystem where we're not going to make it out the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it, and th the whole problem that I see with um, with the SEC right now, is specifically the SEC, is is you know, of course they they want to throw out some type of regulation. They want to try to enforce some things, but nothing is clear and concise. But at, and then at the same time, you know, when you have you know, say Robinhood reaches out and says, "Hey, you know what?" I want to conform to all of your rules. I want to. And then next thing you know, they get served notices. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why would I come to you? Why would I try to conform to these rules when all you're going to do when, first of all, your rules are not, they aren't clear at all. You can't make a decision on any of this shit. But then when I come to you and say, hey, you know what? I want to get into the, I want to, I want to be 100 with you. I want to be on the level. And then you serve me, you, 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 you throw me in court? It's like, yeah. come on, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stuff, but one to try to impose regulation. So they call that self-identification, right? But the thing with the SEC, they can only get you for like security related issues because there's nobody, no entity actually governs crypto in the U.S. I think you had the CFTC. Um, I could be get acting them wrong, but they actually manage it. Uh, have like regulatory oversight, but nobody in the U.S. The government hasn't appointed like an agency like the CFPB or the OCC or the SEC to actually overseas digital assets right and i think that's the use based off some of the chat i've heard that some of the regulations that are being drafted and people use legi scan and search transparency i'll tell you all the laws and bylaws statutes that are being proposed in the government right senate house all that stuff right it's no entity that actually governs that's why the sec can't get them for like 
consume bad practices or harming consumers or not making people KYC. They gonna get you for, hey, this is security, selling security, this and the third, right? Go look at the Wells notices, right? So that's why they do that, but they don't really have meat in the game as far as going out there for having insufficient policies and procedures or government documentation, or KYC program, right? But they have that because you still have the consumer protection stuff from the financial standpoint when you're paying with fiat. So it's like it's 22 and I try to tell people, this act as if we're being regulated. That way, when the regulations do come, because they do give you a grace period, you don't have to scramble and try to put some piecemeal, some stuff together. You're already trying to, you're kind of thinking in that manner. So that's what people are like, guys, let's just understand. Like, it's cool, the memes. I want people to make money, but it's a lot of these products have no intrinsic value, right? When, what I mean by that, they're not generating money outside of that ecosystem. And when you look at projects like us, we have to have a generating mechanism. We have a real product. So look at all the products that make money are either, either and so far it's coming up, but Gamify is coming up, but Layer 0, Layer 1, Layer 2, networks, they make all the money because people are utilizing their platform network to trade, and they have to use that utility token as a, a gas token to interact on that network. Yeah. If you're doing that, what else is, let's, ask, let's really talk about it. What else is making money? Let's really talk about it. I don't know. And my bad, we didn't yeah. go with Jason because Jason has an amazing background. As Dude, well, I was... <laughs> we just talk, I'm talking to you guys because especially you, it's like you, you high level and we have, you know, conversations just about life stuff and it's like you get it. And I want people, especially your audience to understand like a higher thing. And means are great, make money, but get in and get the hell on off, man. You're not going, you go get lucky. If you're not the first person in and these other men market cap, understand like it's hard, right? Because if you don't know who these people are, what are their intentions? Like somebody who has never made a lot of money before and they see this money in, in their face and they can take it, they going to take that shit. I would. Yes. Real. It takes a real solid person to be like, no, I care about other people. I don't want to harm people. But as you can see, every day is a new project. Go look on all the chains that are out there, every network. Most of the time, it's the same dev launching 20 different projects. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know it. They just... <laughs> Or the, or the same scammer has launched PP, poo poo, doo doo, the bullshit, Enu, uh, all that shit, man. Like, like it's the same person. Sometimes it's the same person launching the shit on multiple blockchains because and, they can write the contracts. And you know what? They don't even write the code. They just regurgitate the stuff. I mean, sorry. Oh, yeah, or yeah, copy. You know what I mean? Copy and paste, right? And I was just telling the team, my team, my guys, like, it's so much stuff that we get embedded in smart contracts. These developers are trash. Let's be real. They're not high-level developers. They don't know what they're doing. Because you can have, I was talking to one of my guys, shout out to Ross. He know who he is, right? We was messing around with some stuff. And look, I could be on chat GPT could educate a lot of you people, but go do some additional research and learn about hard hat. Different things, how to launch and deploy if you want to learn code. That way you can be a self audit. You don't have to go to assert it. Assert it sucks. All these audit firms suck. They don't really do line by line code audit reviews. I was an auditor before. We use templates and we look at certain uh, things within the scope yeah. of that, right? But don't go based off that because how many products have had audits in rug? You know what I'm saying? Really look at it. And, and like I said, I want to see a team. I want to see their background. I don't take any project series. I don't even take people in crypto series because I'm some of the people I do up with cool turn out to be the most. Oh my God. Uh, it, it, anyway. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. I just want to go to Nova Scotia and punch somebody in the face, and I'm gonna catch that too. Crazy. So, hey, you know look, what? I'm yeah, he owed me too. Just, just the FYI. I, I ain't even gonna. I'm, I, I may throw that out there later, but I ain't gonna. Dang. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. But hey, man, look, <laughs> Jason. That's crazy. Uh, man, uh, how did you get into Web three? So how I got into Web3 was um, at the end of 2020, I started like th started looking at new investments. I started really thinking about, all right, let's think outside of the box. I want to start investing in something different, something new. So I started doing some research. And I'm just going to throw this out there. I came across um, this company called Vivi. They did their digital collectibles company. And I at, at, so this this actually pains me a little bit. So I actually have an old Coinbase account from I don't even know when. It was way back. And at the time, they only had three tokens in there. One was Bitcoin, one was Ethereum, and one was Litecoin. That's it. They only had three. And man, I did. I put, I 
I did like 20 bucks in there or something like that. And I just didn't remember it at all. Remember it at all. And then 2020 comes and I started. And then I actually had a decent amount of crypto in there because it just sat in there forever. But I had done nothing with crypto. Anyway, so I started researching this digital collectibles company and I started researching this OMI token. And I was like, damn. And I thought, digital collectibles, that's interesting because it's kind of kind of up my alley. But um, I, I didn't quite wrap my arm around it at that point. I wasn't really thinking gamification, buying and selling, et cetera, et cetera. But I was thinking that the crypto that underpinned, so that it's, it's called OMI, it's a token called OMI. And I thought, man, that has some legs. And so little to my behest, that was like the hardest token that you could ever buy in crypto. Hardest token. You had to, you had, it took me no joke. My wife was like, it took you three days to figure out. I was so frustrated. Um, it took me three days to buy, figure out how to buy it. You had to do all this crazy stuff. Anybody who, bu who bought Omi back in 2020 and early 2021 knows what I'm talking about because we all know the pain of buying at that back at that time. <laughs> and so I actually bought a bag of Omi. And then I, then I just started researching all these cryptos and all this other stuff. And I was like, man, this is the wave of the future. And then I went PhD level on this stuff. And I get, I, evidently, I get overly obsessed. I was doing, I was the, this, you know, the stories that you hear about when people that get into crypto that get hooked and they spend like 12 hours a day on crypto, they go work and then lunch is crypto. And then they, man, I'm, I did the same thing, man. I was reading two, three, four in the morning, looking at every video, looking at everything about every crypto thing. Then I started getting into web three. Then before AI started, because one of the companies I actually worked for back in 2013, we were doing AI back then. It was called back then. It was called machine learning, and it was a different type of a technology. So I had already had this exposure to this kind of tech. So then I started getting hooked in all of this stuff, and um, just you know completely changed my outlook on anything. And so my belief system is that. I'm going all in on this, all in. And so I equate this to a couple things. I was too young to get in back in the late, well, I guess maybe the mid 90s to back when the internet started cranking up. I was too young. I was, you know, in, you know, too young for that. Yeah. That's the last time that we've had a uh, an industry that has massive game-changing potential right now. The yeah. time before that was the industrial revolution. So you have to think like we have not had like how big I, 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 I'm sorry. Call, you can call me a moon boy. You can call me anything you want to. It doesn't matter. You cannot, what we're going through right now with uh, web three and AR and, and AI and everything that wraps around this, you can only equate that to two things pre-internet and right after the internet and industrial revolution. And then you can go back, you know, I don't know, before that, but there's there's not a whole lot of things that have these massive catalysts. And this and this is one of those massive catalysts. Yeah, so that's yeah. how I got into the space. And and I'm here for I think that everything is going to be on chain. Every piece of data is going to be on chain. Everybody's the technology is going to evolve. We're going to be all communicating through, um, you know, um, dig digital overlay on augmented reality soon enough. Everything we're talking about healthcare, you, you know, wellness, finances, you name it. Everything is going to be on chain. I feel like everything's going to AI and everything is going to be stored on chain. Absolutely. And and the, the health industry is already there. Uh, they are. Uh, starting to uh, put people's uh, chart, all their charts, all their personal data on it's it's going towards uh, to NFTs. It's like an NFT style. I, I don't know if it's exactly called an NFT, but it's going along those lines to store, you know, your information. That way, you know, you can take it from doctor to doctor or whoever, and they can read your entire chart. They ain't got to reach out to this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? Uh, there's other people that uh, I've heard uh, they are starting. They're going to start doing uh, death death certificate NFTs. Uh, you know, marriage certificate. You know, any type of certificate. You know, things like that. You know what I mean? And and it just it just 
it blows my mind that some people that the the ideas behind behind these these startup these these memes and these they they want to continue doing like old shit instead of thinking towards the future when they're like oh yeah well I want to I want to start an NF or a crypto company you know, you know this we're going to do this you know this is yay we're going to moon this is so much bigger than that. You know what I mean? This yeah. technology is it has so many real world applications and there's too many people that are just so closed minded about it, especially people that aren't even in, you know, they're like, oh, well, crypto's a scam. They're listening to, to, to who at Pelosi and to, oh, well, no, it's, it, it's, you know, they, it's, it's, oh, they, they, human trafficking, that's what crypto's for, you know, and drug dealers, you know what I mean? Shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it blows my mind how people, are still listening to that shit and not just taking the time to really understand like you guys you yeah. took the time when you found out about it you took the time to do some research on what this tech is and then expand it from there man and you, people don't want to do that you just so you just hit a major major point you have to look at nfts as a technology because people when you say nft they think of like punks and apes and they only think of it as a PFP or a picture that, and that's their concept of an NFT. An NFT is nothing but taking data and assigning a hash to it, tokenizing it and putting it on chain. That's it. You can do that for literally, and anything is, can, and will become an NFT. If it's a piece of data that's on chain, and I know you get all these people that are like, oh, if it's all not, if it's layer zero, it's true NFT. If it's a, a layer one, layer two, it doesn't matter. Like if it's a piece of data that's on any blockchain, that's what the definition is, non-fungible token. It just is a piece of data that's non-fungible. And so that's literally anything and everything. Like you touched on birth certificates, death certificates, college degrees, high school educations, real estate, license the funny thing is some of the biggest builders on the planet are not on social media and twitter and they are building some crazy things um and, and building up some crazy web3 companies and and um and are essentially taking traditional organizations and moving them into uh, web3 silently as we all talk about you know you know what is an nft and what isn't an nft so it's it's pretty yeah. wild like I, 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 I fully understand as far as the NF, as far as NFTs, I didn't really grasp because I was like, I was never an NFT guy and I, I didn't take the time to even look at, you know, of course I see, you know, the floating around just, you know, everybody's got their own art. You know, that's why I kept thinking, oh, it's just art, it's art. But when I heard Disney partnered, when they, when they partnered with Polygon, right. Or Polygon Studios, when they partnered with Polygon, I was like, wait a minute. All right, because all right, who owns Disney? Who and then who owns them? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, wait a minute. All right, so then I started connecting dots elsewhere. And these, like you said, these major companies have their hand fully into the Web3 tech. They're not announcing it just yet, you know what I'm saying? But they're getting all their ducks in a row right now. You know, that yep. these these ETFs that's yep. Uh, all all uh, this is all following some processes to go full blown you know we're we're digital you know if you the bricks i mean i'm just, <laughs> I'm just yeah no and here's a good example if you ask a traditional you know pfp in, individual if this is or isn't an nft they're going to be like what are you even talking about so for example when skypath secure when there's an incident report that gets written on chain, uh, let's just say there's a crisis situation, there's an incident that gets re re reported and then written on chain, that is an NFT. That instance is an NFT. Now, nobody in, is going to say, hey, do you have that NFT incident report? No, they're just gonna say, I, I need the incident report. Yeah. And it's gonna be a hash that has all that information data. That's an NFT, that's a non-fungible token because that's how you write data onto on chain through through that technology and yeah. so people are not going to think that over time you know you're somebody's not going to come to you in five years and say hey can you send my you know can you send my nft over to my doctor so that they can diagnose me they're not going to say that they're going to say hey 
how, you know, can you send over my medical record? Or, and actually, they're not even going to do that. They're just going to put their glasses on. They're going to look at it. But the, the, <laughs> it's, going, it's written on chain, the same concept as <laughs> what you perceive as what an NFT is now. It's just data on chain. That's it. Yeah. And so in the future, that it's just, it, it is the way it is. And, you know, an example is, is um, you know, when you get on Instagram, nobody argues back and forth or do they know that Instagram is coded on Python and nobody argues that you ask, Hey, do you know how Instagram is coded? No, they don't. They just turn it on. They want to see their pictures and, and know that it works. They don't argue back and forth that that's true code or true Python or not Python or whatever. I don't. So that's why I don't ever get into those semantics because that's why you got guys like, Oh, oh that's why I always say team is important. Yes. Because you've got people that have been in the space, not even in the space, just in the business world for a long time. They're, we're thinking like two, three years in advance. And, and, and Omar and I, you know, we're representing SkyPath today and now, but we have so many people on the team that has so much experience across the board. And that's why I feel like it's very important to, um, to look at projects that have a, a, a technology, have a, have a technology that will be a complete game changer and then do they have the team that can take this thing and scale it globally? That's the yeah. other piece of it. Can you scale this thing globally? Because the total addressable market cap in, you know, in the space that we play in is in the trillions of dollars. And so I know people get excited about like, you know, if a token gets the 10, 10 million market cap and all that stuff, but, but we have a company where the addressable market, total addressable market is in the trillions. And oh, by the way, there are not very many options right now. So like, what are your options? We just, wasn't there an incident yesterday, a school shooting yesterday? There was a couple of shooting yeah. incidents yesterday. Somebody had uh, opened fire, you know, somewhere, somewhere else. There was like multiple incidents. And, and you think like, what, what, are, what is the government installing now to help alleviate and prevent those situations? That's... And then you think like, who can, who can help with that? Well, SkyPath is going to and will. And we also have the folks on the team that can get this in front of everybody and can because we have some members on our team that are at the highest levels or were at the highest levels of, of government. And so yeah. when you really start like thinking and saying, hey, where can this thing go? And if you can, you don't even have to put one, just get in the ballpark. I don't, if you say one plus one equals four, that's close enough for us. You know what I mean? Like you don't even have to know that one plus one equals two. You can say three or 0.5 or four. You, you, you're going to be close where you're going to hit some big, big numbers if you really think about it. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, while we're talking about Sky, uh, let's, let's get a little background on Sky, man. How, how, did, how did the idea behind what Sky Path is, how did that come to fruition? So actually, if I don't read this, um, you know, software engineer, his name was Quinn. Um, he was an employee of SkyPep and he kind of told, uh, introduced Dave to, to, you know, blockchain technology, right? And um, from that point on, Dave had started to have big massive events in Rhode Island, like huge events, like some of the top companies actually came to Rhode Island. They wanted it to be a crypto hub, kind of like what Wyoming is now. Yeah. And Certain things didn't come to fruition because it was too early for Rhode Island. Didn't quite understand it like most people that we talked to. Like, what the hell is blockchain? This black Silk Road is buying drugs and all this crazy stuff, right? They didn't get it, right? So I ended up meeting Quinnen and he introduced me to Dave, and I kind of helped him with some things as far as like introducing them to real developers and teaching them certain things that you can and can't do. Um, and, and from that point, I'm like, look, David, let's build this platform. Let me talk to Derek. Let me bring on a team of people that get help us with the adoption on the grand scale, like Jason. But we could pretty much have all this data on chain. And that way it's live, it's interactive, it's cheaper to have it on chain to go put on the server and have you know a server room or using AWS, any cloud-based stuff, right? Because the way we're gonna scale up, it was it's just from a cost perspective, right? And that's why looked at subnets and and people don't know like Cardano and all these other blockchains, Polkadot, they already have subnets too. But see, the learning curve is so, it's crazy in this space, right? Because most people, Massive. It, they don't understand this stuff. They get intimate with one chain. That's what, we, and we'll talk about some other projects like blockboards. That's why we want to go to each chain to get people to understand different DEXs 
how to add LP to different, you know, DEXs and how to swap on them and all that stuff too. But ultimately we was like, yo, blockchain is going to be the future. And if people don't know about Dave Paolo and his background, his son and all that stuff, I advise you to go look into that stuff because we got a lot of connections, real world that nobody can compete with. But he understood this because he started an internet company in the early 90s. This guy was a multi, multi millionaire at the, in his mid 20s and the 90s, right? So he built up companies. He know uh, what to do, Mad Max. He knows all these people in real life. And that's the funny thing about it. We don't, you don't never see us name dropping or, you know, building up fake hype or any of that stuff. But these are people we really know. I, yeah. I found some of the meetings that me and Jason, or this I've been in and the communications. People would, we would be in a billion dollar mark cap just based off that, letting off information, right? But ultimately, to get back to it, I kind of introduced Dave to the, the what we could really utilize the blockchain for. And once Dave is like Jason, once he started to click in his mind, he's like, oh, this is like the damn internet. This is, we can put a, like, oh man, this game on. And uh, from that point on, we started to, you know, reach out to people in, you know, layer zero, layer one, layer twos, um, get people to understand what we are building. And I also want to say too, guys, before we get off tangent, that our platform is just not for like shootings. We could use it for anything from a communication tool. We could track gases if somebody's in a, a minefield. Um, we could hook drones to it to survey um, wild areas. If somebody's in the stadium, we can pinpoint exactly where that person is and bring them targeted marketing. It's all inclusive because we can add anything that get hooked into it from an API to our platform. And that what separates us from so fire drills communications we can put our nfts to do one day access so instance one of our partners ripples they have a partnership with the nfl right and you know they have a lot of contractors right we could populate one day nft passes for them to get access to that arena for that one day only and expire yeah. and we can close off certain areas of that arena they don't have access to we track all that and that's on chain dude it's so much stuff that we do that people don't quite understand and i try to get them to understand guys even if we have all this stuff, you get per we have utilities built made real world utilities that increase in the intrinsic value of our token because you can pay for our technology and that we want to go out to all these clients. And I'm not saying it, but we have like a CVS or Walgreens, somewhere like that. We want to work with them and help them with their bottom line by having incentive programs or loyalty programs by paying the sky token because they don't have to hold the token. It's going to automatically swap in the back end to the stable coin anyway, you know. So I want people to understand, like, guys, start thinking at a higher level. Stop thinking intermediate. Think long term. If you got these people who have been super successful, have built things in a high level before, what makes you think they're not going to succeed and they don't have the connections to get it done based on somebody who you don't know, who poopy face one, two, three on Twitter that bought 100,000 bots who don't have no real world experience. You think this guy could go into a damn meeting with it? the head of some of the top DOD contracted companies in the world or the people that had the highest level of the DOJ, you think they can have these conversations? Hell no. <laughs> so they're going to take you to the promised land. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's like listening, li listening to, to, to people that's never made money in crypto, Exactly. you know, and they're teaching you how to make money in crypto. It's like, what? Wait a minute. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, man. And off that though, it's so crazy because a lot of people got lucky. And I'm glad they made their money, but they can't charge. They got lucky. You can't sit. We can launch a token tomorrow, right? And we wouldn't have, we could get all the influencers and all that stuff, and we could not go anywhere. And some random coin that just, some bullshit, go 100x, 1,000x, get to a billion dollar market cap. And what nobody know, right? And those people are like, yeah, man, I called this. No, the hell you didn't. It was love. It has no intrinsic value. It's love. Let's keep it 100, right? But see, we and I want people to stop listening to these people because for one, social media is not a real world. People perpetrate, people will mislead you, people want clout. I hate when people post, oh, I got three, three hundred thousand dollars in my wallet. What means are the bad people? It irks me. Why? Oh. Why are you believing this shit? Oh, buy this token. Yeah, so you could be as excellent liquidity. Stop. People like really think real world with this. Yeah. I'm animated because I, I love this. This is my passion, right? And I hate to see people get harmed or listen to people who they don't know or believe in people they would never hang out with. If I can't bring you to your house and you don't have my personal number, I'm not I'm not listening to you. That's all a facade. For, and I, I tell people, ask, really ask yourself, what are they trying to gain all this by putting this online? They get you to come in so you get they get exit on you, right? And if they don't have a mechanism in their project like us with a 
LP function and age the LP so you can essentially it would never be rubbed unless we did some nefarious shit or we got hacked. You don't see that stuff. Like, it, it, dude, it's so much stuff that I could say and see, but I don't want to harm anybody. I just want to educate people, right? Because at the end of the day, all adults, you make your own financial decision. But please, guys, like, really understand some of this shit is, is bogus, right? They don't own the IP. You don't know who these people are. They don't have an LLC. They don't. Anyway, anyway, that's I'm just, it's, it's so much, dude. Like, it, it, it perturbs yeah. But I understand that it's a gap, and that's why we're doing what we're doing to educate people and teach them the right way. It might be slower growth, but look at the potential upside versus short-term upside. That's big, all the pump. And man, there's so much stuff I could teach. People. Big time, big yeah. time. One of the things too that um, Omar always says: if you really listen to Omar, he actually gives away a lot of alpha. Yeah, you, you know, and 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 I recognize it because we actually talk about all this stuff behind the scenes. But Omar gives away a lot of alpha without, um, without you know, giving away alpha. And one of the things that he always talks about is, um, you know, SkyPath Security is a is a traditional organization that per, that gets traditional revenue stream, so Web two revenue. And one thing that Omar always says is, you know, we have a real company, we have a Web two company that will feed web, our Web three ecosystem. And so I'm just going to leave that there. But Omar says that over and over. And so you name, you know, and there are other Web3 companies that have Web2 revenue that can feed the ecosystem, but not a whole lot. And so when you look at all these different projects out there, how many, you see the, you see the reverse. You see a lot of crypto tokens and NFTs that get built up. And then they're like, okay, the hype's over. Now what do we do to to now what do we do? Now let's build this. Let's start selling T-shirts or let's start. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, we we have a, a Web2 company that has a total addressable market in the trillions, trillions, and it'll help feed the Web3 ecosystem. So I think that's super important to always keep in mind, you know, when you look at like our project. I do want to back up a little bit, though, for your audience who... Um, who's never heard of us or doesn't know what we do. I just want to give a two second, you know, 10,000 foot view of SkyPath yeah. so that they, they're like, what the hell do these guys do? So the technology is essentially, I'm going to make it real simple because the one thing about the, the, the technology that I love is it's a, it's an incredibly complex technology, incredibly complex. But for the end user, it's going to be incredibly simple to use. And we want that because we want everybody to be using it all day, every day, all the time. So what it is, essentially, it's a con ops platform, which just means a lot of data is coming in so that people can evaluate on the fly and make decisions based on live data. It's used a lot in military, defense, you know, war, combat, et cetera. But it's a spatial awareness technology that can essentially pinpoint down to about six inches of accuracy. And the reason why I say that like that is because, you know, a lot, what, a, one of the forward things that we do is it's a, you know, it's a spatial awareness con ops platform that aids first responders in all, any and all crisis and hazard situations. So for instance, if, if a responder was responding to a medical incident or a school shooting or a heart attack or a fire, all that data is being fed to them live stream and they they're either utilizing a tablet or a phone or in the future maybe some type of a ar goggles etc and they're able they're they're getting fed a mat just like you playing fortnite or or call of duty you see everything you've got all the information so you can make your decisions quickly um so that's what's being fed to the first responders. It allows them to mitigate risk, save lives much faster. So a quick example would be imagine if, um, if, you, if somebody had alerted that there's a heart attack victim in this building complex that had 3,000 rooms. A medical responder that goes there is not going to know where room 2,443 is. Yes. But on our platform, on our technology, think video game here. There's going to be like the the fastest route possible. It's it, it's an overlay of the you know the buildings. It's an overlay of the area. There's going to be exits and entry markers and all that stuff. They're going to be able to they're going to be able to essentially look at their tablet or their phone or whatever device they're using and get to that victim as fast as humanly possible. 
um, and they don't have to think about it. They just have to get there. Now, there's also communications mechanisms as well. So when they're on the way, they'll be able to live stream. Um, they'll be able to tap in and live stream with the people that are there aiding this individual prior to the first responders. And maybe they and they can see the condition. They can, you know, provide uh, live and active um, help to to before the responders get there. So so it's 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 something that is 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 needed. Um, yeah. It's something that is is it's easy to get behind this technology. I mean, it's saving our friends, our family, our loved ones, our children, our grandparents. It's it's helping save those lives. But yeah. it, when you simplify it, it's a spatial technology. And Omar touched on this a little bit earlier. So what does that mean? It just means that we can pinpoint things down to an accuracy of under six square inches. So Omar touched on like a um, you know like a, in a in a in a stadium. Imagine if somebody was sitting in you know some seat and it doesn't matter because the spatial technology is is not on an x and a y axis it's literally everywhere it's everywhere it doesn't matter if it's high middle low a thousand feet in the air uh, you know underground whatever so so imagine like if you ordered a hot dog at a stadium and you didn't have to leave your seat to go get it why because somebody knew exactly where you were and they could deliver the hot dog or in a year or two from now they could take send that hot dog on a drone and then that drone can come over and just deliver it right to you and yeah. it knows exactly where to go um there's there's a there's a one that i really love this example it's one that david talks about all the time but i think a lot of people can really get behind this um we have a a, a client that we're that we're working on um onboarding and they have a um they have a, a lot of uh, visually impaired and blind employees it's a gigantic global warehouse retailer um and these warehouses are absolutely massive both i mean they're just massive and so they have a lot large number of um, blind and visually impaired employees and the way that these employees get around now is through friction tape it's literally what it sounds like. It's literally tape that has that's friction where they 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 can feel like braille where they're going. Wow. On on our technology, you don't need that anymore. They wear these little earbuds and these earpieces tell you exactly when and where to go. So the challenge with the friction tape is if the tape gets taken up by the cleaners or if there's an issue with it or they get moved, it renders them employee, those employees, that's, that's a challenge. It's also an insurance risk as well, and it's a hazard. But with our technology, it's kind of like a ways finder for them. Um, they're, evil, they're able to navigate, but think about this. What happens if a giant pallet of glass bottles falls and breaks? That friction tape is not gonna prevent that visually impaired person from, from hurting themselves because they don't know. With our technology, it does let them know, so they're able. They're able to. It this this the uh, that tech that'll get written into the technology and live streamed to them, and they'll say, "Hey, there's a pallet on, you know, floor five A B, whatever, whatever, and there's a bunch of broken glass, and it'll help navigate that visually impaired person away from the danger." The other thing that may, a lot of people don't know is that there's a lot of high speed robots that are in those uh, facilities now and they're zooming around everywhere and every you know it could be robots it could be um, forklifts it could be any of that stuff mm -hmm. and so the, uh, you know using the spatial technology those are all tracked and so you know these employees will then instantly know where these high-speed robots are at any given second um, so that they can navigate safely uh, away from those so that so there's many 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 use cases um from both a uh, co commercial and a, and retail perspective so th so there's literally no client on this planet that that we don't have a use case for that could utilize the technology whether you're a target or a medical center or a cvs or walmart or whatever there is a use case for this technology yeah absolutely and dude so th this this because a, a lot of that information might might have gone over over a lot of people's heads, and I'm 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 going to put this very 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 simply, in two different scenarios, right? So for one, as far as the special tech, if you've ever watched Total Recall, go watch the beginning of Total Recall, and you only you don't even got to watch the whole movie, just watch the beginning. So they are chasing down Wade, uh, well I think his name is Wade Wilson, right, or something like that. Well anyway, Quaid. 
Quaid, Quaid. Quaid, that's what it was. Yes. So they're chasing him down, right? They have this device in their I know hand. where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. They have this device in their hand because he's got a tracking device shoved up his nose, right? He doesn't know it. He doesn't know it. Just this. <laughs> Hey, just mystery blown. He does not know this is this device is up his nose. We aren't know. putting anything in your nose, though, so yeah. don't worry. <laughs> but they're tracking him. So not only are they ha do they have left, right, front, behind you, they don't have just have direction. They have elevation of where he is, and this is very, very important. Especially so. This goes to my second one: is you know when you're in an emergency, when you're in any. You know, especially in an emergency, like say this goes beyond emergencies, but in emergencies, when you are in a high, um, like high adrenaline situation, say a fire, uh, shooting or something like that, if like being ex military, I understand that you know the situation is never from from one minute to the next, it's not going to be the same. One person that may need some help in one room may panic, run to another room. Or, you know, run down the hallway, maybe run to another floor or something like that. And then, you know, when a lot of these first responders come in, they don't know where to go. They've never been in this building before. They don't know the ins and outs of it. They don't know that there's a room inside of a room inside of a room. You know what I'm saying? It, so these, this application has is the, the tech behind this is so freaking amazing that you have to have that kind of higher... It's, Especially in the Web3 space, man. Hey, I'm telling y'all, y'all educate yourselves when it comes to, especially if you're investing, if you're investing, for, if you're a straight, straight DGN, then I ain't talking to you. But if you are, you know, if you we'll are take looking, the DGNs. yeah, yeah. Even, well, but if you're looking for, like, like, say if you're an investor, like I've, I used to be straight DGN, now I'm investor, you know, where I'm looking at, at, okay, what is this going to do for me in the long run? What is my ROI going to be? for the long term and that's why i'm looking and, and then you're like oh well tech what what tech applications okay it's not just oh well i made a copy of chat gpt and we're going to the moon no it ain't it ain't <laughs> you know what i'm saying it, it's not that you know what i'm saying what what is this tech that people are coming out with or they say that is going to be so freaking amazing that has that potential to to not just serve the crypto community but just serve everybody you well, I, I think you you and omar actually touched on something too that um and i think you both understand it the other piece of that is this omar talks about this all the time mitigates insurance risks we're going to be saving so much money for companies from an insurance perspective it's going to blow people's mind but the other piece of it is this is what they don't understand this is where blockchain comes in uh you know, and it's super important and you touched on it because you're ex-military, do you, when you're going into a, a firefight, if you're legitimately going into a firefight, AKA school shooting, et cetera, you know how many, do you, did you count your steps that you went north and then you steps that you went east and then oh, south well, I and then how I, many, how many I, I was an engineer. So I was, but you, no, I hear you, but do you, do you see where I'm going when you're? Well, I, in, I do that you're anyway a, on the regular, like like even just walk, if I'm walking from, I, I don't know, I, I don't, I thought I thought it was just me being ADHD or whatever, but I count my steps everywhere I go. <laughs> so most people in a crisis situation are just going after and trying to save somebody's lives, right? right. But with our technology, you're gonna, it's gonna tell you, it's gonna tell and create a report that says this individual went a hundred feet this way, 50 feet yeah, that way, right. shot three times, went up elevation, 200 feet, all, and all that data is going to get written on chain. Why that's important is because later when you're coming back and you're testifying what happened, you don't have to remember those things because all of that was caught live through the technology and written into a report that's immutable on chain. Yeah. But also why that's important. And this is another thing to think about is Imagine our technology uh, went through 200 school shootings. So five years from now, prevent you know it went through 200 school shootings. Now the data is going to be irrefutable and immutable, and they can do one of two things. They can say, "Wow, look at how many more lives have been saved. How much time we've saved in in, in each incident, because that's all going to be reportable and recordable and readable." But the other piece of it is. Let's just say there are things that could be done better. 
then they're going to be able to look at all this reporting and all this data and go, without a doubt, here are the things that we could have done better in this situation. Whereas if you go back to the, some of the past shootings that we've had, you know, in, in the past few years, what can you do better? Well, you sat outside the, some, the classroom door for 45 minutes. You don't really know what you could do better because there wasn't, we, that data is not there. It's not, yeah. it's not written on chain. We don't know how many steps were here. We don't, you know, with our technology, they go room by room and boom, light it up green. If it's a safe room, boom, it gets lit up green. They already know where the incidents are because the room's red. It's lit up red. They go straight there. They deal with whatever the issue is there. I mean, that, when I say it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a live con ops platform. It's feeding information live. Go ahead, Omar. We got to let them know too, like once the alert is made and like I said, it could be any event, medical, we actually, if they have CCTVs and we tapped into that, we could see it. Law enforcement would see that before they even get on scene. So they're already formulating a, a strategy before they get there to mitigate the risk too. So it's super cool. And I tell people this for anything, um, robberies and retail stores or shopping centers, uh, car thefts and the car lot, like it's endless possibilities, guys. And the, the, what we're trying to incorporate the token too is we could potentially have our own subnet uh, network that's going to require clients to utilize our token. It's a gas token too. See, but nobody can compete with that because we already have a clientele. We have clients under, you know, contracts already, right? And I keep telling people, Derek Bork, research him people he helped write some of the, this is law in the state of florida we have lobbyists in florida i've talked to the senator uh all in california i talked to the guys in connecticut we talked to the people in massachusetts this is all facts i talked to jan bush down in damn texas this is a fact right so i try to tell people guys we understand what we're doing it just takes a little longer when you're dealing with the people that we and you're dealing with technology at this level we can't build some fly by night shit overnight and then it's going to be a billion dollar company we didn't build, let's be honest, we didn't build this to just, you know, waste a year or two of our time for nothing, not to see it come to fruition. We had bumps in the road, ups and downs, but we still here. And I tell people, look at all these projects that, like I said, fly by night, here one day, gone the next. We still here. So what can you potentially say about us? Nothing. We ain't rugging people. We build a real tech. If you want to have a conversation with me, I could come fly you to Virginia and sit in my office and we could really, I can really show you some shit that would blow your mind. And, I, you know, I can tell it to anybody. The scam yeah. people in Nova Scotia, if they just would write the good people, if they were good people and realized that we got attorneys in fucking Toronto, you, you this is crazy. But if they just want to take a come, come in and see what we're building, it would change the whole narrative. But like I told Jason, we'll go after great people. We want to bring as many, we have 10 great people that could go out there and really believe in it and push us to the masses because everybody starts small and grows together, right? So yeah. that's what. That's why I love coming on here. You know, and I'm sorry it took us so long, man. But we know you super All busy. Right. The big dog now. You the big dog, man. We keep going. We like, damn. Hey, I ain't even got off the porch yet, man. I'm still, I'm still trying to, trying to break, break that leash. <laughs> You know, it's funny, we have two, you know, I, for me, I experienced two different conversations and I'm totally fine with having both because I have both in me. Um, you talk to the, the, the D-Gen crypto oh. buyers. And man, they just want to know when Moon, when Catalyst, when when Coinbase, when you know, CMC, when when, yeah, Lambo, when yeah. this, when that. And so they just want they want to see like that five X, that two X, that ten X. And it's funny when I talk to, man, we just had some big conversations with some big dogs, some big people, some people that say, hey, if I, some people that if you if they tweet out one tweet, it, it's game over. And the response to me, or and to Omar, the response is, Jason, this right. is an absolute no-brainer. This is a no-brainer. That's the response. And they're like, um, you know, w w you know, you get into these positions where you know they they um, they are asking you, how do we get on your team? How do we? What do we got to do to be an investor? What do we got to do to support you guys from a marketing advertising perspective? And we're talking about big names, and so you know. When that when those happen, it's going to change the it's going to change the narrative for us very very fast. And one of the things I always tell Omar in the background is that um, you know I love going on the I, I love going on these sh these podcasts and these spaces and streams and all that because like I feel like it's for for you and what I was telling Omar before the show like you 
I feel you, you're giving us a platform to talk. And, may, and I don't know how many people we're talking to. It could be five, it could be 10, 20, not, it could be a small amount, but I always tell Omar, like w- right now, you know, we're an unknown. Um, we're small, $600,000 market cap, et cetera. But pretty soon we're going to be real big, really, really big. Everybody's going to know who SkyPath is. Everybody's going to know what Sky Token is all about. And the, and the shoe is going to be, I mean, I hate to say shoe is going to be on the other foot, but it's going to be different. And anybody, I told Omar that anybody that has supported us in the smallest amount, we support back a thousand times. So like, you know, like if Omar and I ever get too huge and like we got 50,000 people trying to get us on their YouTube channel, all you got to do is just send me a text and say, hey, get, you, get on my YouTube channel and I'll be there in two seconds. And that's, and that's the way that I look at things. Like we see in the communities who supports us and who's always, who, who, who's for us and, and who, who really roots us on. And, you know, like, do, do, look, do I want to see the token price rip roar and go through the moon and all that? Man, I'm a human being, of course. Like, that, like I, I shouldn't even have to say that. You shouldn't even have to ask me, like, when moon, when Lambo, when this. We're humans. We all want to see you know, price go up. That's it. Of course. But like, you know, at the same, but, but, the, but we're also like, I also, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, sort of eat on me a little bit, and I'm going to say it in a real nice term is that we're going to be putting a technology everywhere that is going to be helping save people's lives. I'm sorry, but there's no amount of mooning. You know, if your kid is dead, because of a, a tragic incident, I don't think you're going to give two shits about if SkyPath moons or not. You're going to be grieving the rest 100%. of your life. So like, I'm, you know, and I'm saying it just like that. That's important to me. That's what's really important is that I don't, the, the mooning of the token is going to be the byproduct of everything that we're doing. That's going to happen and it's going to be the byproduct. The, yeah. the product that we're bringing is, is a product that's going to be saving people's lives. And so like it, so that's the, that's the, if, if, we, if we were doing like a gaming token or like a, any other thing, I'd be totally fine with if, if, if the questions were when, when Coinbase, when Moon, when Lambo, I'd be like, yeah, 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 cool. But like, man, this is different. This is something that's, you know, is everybody is frustrated by, all of the nefarious events that happen in the, you know, in the schools and all the issues and anybody who's been any kind of sort of part of any of that, that's going to be the the main focus. And that's, and that's why. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, on on the flip side of that, you know, besides just saving lives, the, 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 the real world application for this, I mean, just just w- let's just throw another company out of just some something that's not even like first responder related just we'll just throw another. how many of us have seen the commercial the domino's commercials where they got they got a little man flying it's like here's your pizza on top of a fucking mountain somewhere you know what i'm saying it's like and and it's like dude just imagine like this tech actually being applied to that to exactly. a drone say drones Dude, I, and getting a pizza delivered in the middle of the park, you're just like, oh man, I'm hungry. And, uh, bloop, bloop, bloop. and the next thing you know, you got it in, in your lap. It's like so crazy. Yeah. You know, have satellite internet, right? Connectivity anywhere in the world. I want people to think about that because we have had conversations about certain integration. And it's not saying this is going to happen, but we want to be access all over the world. We know some guys are like really remote parts of Wyoming and in the Pacific Northwest. Parts of that that they don't have internet service, so it'd be a little harder for them to have connectivity. But we have for that as well. We know who Rapid SOS is for the guys who don't who who, who that is that live data to the nine one one dispatcher. We already have a partnership with them. We know who for AT and T FirstNet is. We already talked to them too. People don't know that there are other solutions that are out there too that we can't name just yet because it all depends on these partnerships that we are working on currently with some of the biggest people in the damn crypto space right so all this stuff has been brought to our attention on numerous occasions and i tell people this don't face somebody because it might took them a little longer to get to the finish line than everybody else but as long as we finish and we become better and faster each and every race you need to pay attention right yeah. you know it hasn't changed 
We haven't went to jail. We haven't did anything that, that would make people like, damn, aha, we got you. No, we did <laughs> And I'm going to tell you this, like, I'm still love everybody, respect everybody, but you got to give us our flowers, man, because if we're telling you we have all this stuff, believe in us. If you can believe somebody who you don't know, who won't show their face, um, I've got to be anonymous. And man, get the hell out of here with that bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> For a second. That's like me walking up to you on the street and be like, yo, Vince, dude, I'm about to give me a $200 and I'm going to fucking 100x that shit. You can be like, oh my, who, who are you? Why, why would I? So why are we doing that in, in, in this space, people? We preach DYOR and all this stuff, and you can't even read a damn smart contract. It's amazed me how to, how to tell people to go look at uh, Ava Scan, uh, uh, Snow Trace, uh, Ether Scan, uh, FTM Scan, uh, RB Scan. Most people don't even know who, what they are, but it's the, the you know the blockchain explorer for all these native tokens. So these blockchains, right? They don't even know how to read the code in the contract to see if it's a tax on it, if it's a blacklist. And I'm like, guys, y'all been trading fucking me coins for three years, and you don't know how to read a contract to see what the tax is or uh, what. Uh, like what functions they have in there? Like, get real, get off my line. That's why I don't do many AMA that stuff because it's like yeah. the patient is lacking, and I'm no smarter than anybody else. But I love this, so I really look into this stuff and want to become better at this. That way, I can educate yeah. around me, right? But it's so much garbage in, garbage out in this space on on Twitter and this, and you gotta have, renounce your contract and you gotta do this. No, people, and I test. Yeah. People too. I'm gonna call your names out real soon too. I know we've been we, we going a little long, but it's a lot of stuff. Hey, it's all good. All in real life. I think people forget that shit too. I audit stuff. I talk to some of the highest people, some of the highest institutions, biggest banks, all that stuff. CEOs don't nobody bother me. You can talk all the stuff you want, but I know my stuff. I keep paper trails too. I can read the blockchain too. I know the government has software that can track every stain that you do on on chain. You can use Tornado Cash. It don't matter. You gotta. Off ramp that shit. Got to off ramp somewhere. Off ramp people. Got pay attention. You got to off ramp. Damn. I, when I was at Uppo, I seen all the fraud. I'm just like, man, look at. I'm gonna tell y'all this too. When you go to your CEX, right, and you're doing your little KYC verification, and they record, you got to do your camera. Man, I worked at Uppo. Sorry, Uppo, if you're listening, it is what it is. I don't work there no more. We will record you. We will see everything that you're doing. Listen to you in the background on your camera because you consent to that stuff. We would check for abuse of people that's past fraud and coaching people to set up accounts. All this stuff I try to tell people, and people also too. I damn help build one of the damn Coinbase's card programs. I have connections there too. But you don't see me like, oh, like Terrarium back in the day. We're going to get listed on being, uh, buying. no, it don't work like that, man. You got a beneficial owner and all this. They have KYC programs in place for real because they're real public companies, right? Yep. It's, it's levels to this shit. You know, but anyway, I've been talking too much, man. I just, I, when I talk to great people, man, I chat. It's all good, man. Well, uh, let me throw, I want to throw something else out there and just whoever's watching and, and you and everybody else, I, I will tell you this, like, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people do ask, like, when's Catalyst happening? They're, you know, whatever the Catalyst. And I'll tell you at this point now, um, we have, so we have a, a, a really big meeting on Thursday um it's a it's an it's not a first meeting it's like um you know like a, a, mo a third or fourth meeting it's pretty much to kind of hopefully finalize some stuff but why i'm telling you this is this at this point like i have i couldn't i don't know when catalysts are going to be and the reason that i'm telling you this is because people people who are real movers on this planet now are already looking at SkyPath, researching, looking at our charts, has asked us where are we traded, et cetera, et cetera. And why I'm telling you this is because I don't know. I literally could wake up tomorrow and the chart be completely yeah. different. And it's and and not saying that it's going to, and not saying that who I know who I know it, it is or anything like that. What I'm telling you is that we've had many, many advanced enough conversations and we're getting ready to wrap enough things up. And these people are not stupid people. These people are, you know, they, they have deep pockets. They also understand the crypto space. So they're not going to sit there and wait till it two or three X's. They're going to, you know, generally speaking, these folks are like, OK, I'm getting in and I'm going to, you know, get all get, then start cranking this thing out. So I'm just letting everybody know that like catalysts are kind of sort of behind us. I know like chart wise, 
there's been, you know, there's not been any huge movements in the chart. But what I'm saying is that at this point now, it's it's kind of out of Omar, my it's it's out of our hands because we've already exposed um, quite a few, you know, big 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 movers to what we're doing, uh, where we're traded, and also, um, you know, and th and they're they're very interested. So yeah. I'm just I, I'm just letting the community know, like you know, think about those things. Think about the team, the technology, and then what I just said. Hey, you you want to know when catalyst? The tech is the catalyst. <laughs> that that's the catalyst. Get out, get all that DJ bullshit out the out of your mind you know you you got to elevate you got to elevate your, your your sense of thinking you know when it comes to especially when you're talking about technology you got to elevate your mind and educate yourself and it, for those that keep saying when cattle i'm gonna say it again the tech is the catalyst the tech is the utility when you tell the tech the tech i'm telling you what man i can't say it enough man this tech is so far beyond uh, uh, understanding for a lot of people. And, you know, if if you do not understand this tech, if you do not understand what is going on, I'm telling you, get some education about yourself and learn what's going on. Because, you know, especially if, if you are in the crypto, especially if you're in the crypto and you're, you're looking for, you know, something with utility. Everybody keeps screaming utility, but they don't want to buy a fucking token with utility. That has real world utility, dude. Dude, Take let me back. Take a step what, back and look, man. Let me tell you, Omar and I and David, we were in the meeting uh, like a, two weeks ago. It was a uh, maybe a second or third meeting, and these the gentlemen that were in the meeting are retired uh, combat leaders, yeah. meaning ba battlefield commanders. Now I don't know if people understand what that means. They're using the most advanced technology on the planet for the United States military on the, on the battlefield, they were asking us questions, can it do this, can it do that, and blown away by the response that we were giving them. Like, they were, like, surprised. Because some of this stuff that it can do, you, you know, it, it's, and some of the stuff that they need it to do is, first of all, that's crazy. What they need it to do is crazy. You'd be surprised at what people are going to be using this technology for. But, but I was more surprised that they were surprised at what it could do because I know that their backgrounds are significant. So yeah. when you yell, you know, when you're yelling into your mic, the tech is your, it is, it really is. It's going to be, it, it's people, it's going to be a very wild ride over the next couple of years, but I'm excited to be part of it. I mean, I'm just riding these guys' coattails. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just out there trying to tell people what it's all about and trying to, you know, trying to spread the, spread the gospel about it and hopefully people get it. But it's going to be a wild ride. I'm in the meetings. I've seen it firsthand. And um, and normally I don't get too shocked by this stuff because I've been in tech for, you know, two decades now. So, like, tech doesn't kind of shock me. But um, but when people that have been in this, this you know, at this experience level get blown away, that kind of makes me, you know, that's that's bullish for me. Yeah. Talking about we talking about multi-billion dollar companies, guys. Some even trillion dollar companies. This is all facts, right? And it will blow your mind. Like the people that we oh uh, anyway, we're talking too much. And I just want to give a shout out to a few people too. Eman, man. Hit me up, man. We gotta talk, brother. Eman, you know, CEO Ava Labs, my guy. Um, I just want to drop a few names, you know. Shout out to you, Dragon Rider, my team. I have my buddy Charles, my guy Matt, my good people over there. You know who you are. Um, Matt S over at Ava Labs. Um, this is great people, the fandom community, Arbitrum, BNB, Polygon, Tron. What's up, Tron community? I know a lot of people don't know about that. So we're trying to introduce you guys to that optimism. Um, say hello. All the networks out there, mainnet C, that most people don't know about because they kind of just base. What's up, base? I'm coming for you. Um, Jesse, what's up, Jesse? If people know who Jesse is at base, man, Jesse respond to my damn email. Um, is everybody, man, all the top networks out there, even say the shame. I see y'all doing great things. They just like us building. It's taking a little longer, but they still got a community, and the community is what keeps things going. But like, you guys can't compare to us, man, with what we have. And the cool thing about it, they just they just had a ex, ex, some some kind of exploit happen and they, everything. Gotta have great developers, brother. You can't have a point in time if your coach guys one thing about this 
code is code, man. If you got good engineers and devs and stuff, you don't have these issues. You beta test that stuff in and out. Now, you don't need to go through certain because they just run that shit through automated process. Get people that really know what they do, and that's somebody off. Hey, can I be a software dev? Are you, are you, hell no. <laughs> have you worked for Google before? Have you worked at the DOD before? Why would I want you if you ain't got no damn real world experience? Let's keep it on it, right? But this shout out to everybody that's doing great things. Um, like I said, all the networks out there, Polygon. Um, like I said, fandom people learn about these other blockchains, man. Some of them are super fast. TPS is learn with time. Fidelity is learn about all this stuff, right? It'll blow your mind. You'll get away from some of these chains that you think are great and they're not. Shout out to Cardano, man. My guys over there, Cardano. Um, like I said, everybody that's doing great things in this space, all the projects out there, even the meme coins that are doing great. Guys, I wish you the best, man. Let's get it. Let's continue to build and bring the web two people to the space. That's how you bring mass adoption, not just, you know, circulating your token inside the same damn people. That's not bringing no money. That's why I said think about intrinsic value. Think about how you go get mass adoption. Think how you can survive when these regulations come. And think who's really going to use this in the real world. You can't go to the Boys and Girls Club, which we have a partnership with in Providence, and teach them about some mean coin when we can tell them about Block Bulls or Skypath and teach them that's how you bring people from the Web 2 space into Web 3. Absolutely. That's what we're doing. But people don't have the patience to understand that. I'm going to unleash the beast in a couple months when I tell Jason, hey, go to the Boys and Girls Club and teach these kids and parents and family who use our platform how to buy safe memes and safe plays and positions and projects in DeFi. That's what we're going to do. And I'm looking at all the pro networks out there for a particular reason, because we will need a, a, a network to house our data. So whoever wants to come partner with us, and we do have some good partners that's coming down the chain. So stay tuned in regards to that. We definitely want to add value, and that's what we're thinking about. It's always about integrating the token because we know that can be used for various utilities, for form of payment, a gas token, a loyalty token, like governance token, all this stuff that people say when they throw out utility who don't even know what the hell a damn utility is because you buy non-utility projects that don't yeah. even... Anyway... We appreciate you, my friend. And, you know, I, I just I love talking to smart, great, intelligent brothers, especially thank you for your service, my friend. I didn't know you was. Okay. Thank you for that. And it makes sense because you understand situation awareness and how that, you know, critical time to get to events and save lives. So we appreciate you. Yeah. But I really do. I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it, man. Well, before we go, man. Hey, so all right, because this is called Behind the Bullshit. So I always ask. I got I got two questions that I ask everybody and it's, it's going to throw you for a loop. All right. So this, it, all right. So you know, throughout throughout your careers and stuff like that, there's there's a couple moments in time. You know what I mean? Because we already kind of went through your backgrounds and stuff like that. So you know, there there's two. There, there's a couple. You know, there's more than one. We all we all know there's more than one. But you know, you can throw out any of them. There's always uh, some positive bullshit moments. And there's always some negative bullshit moments. The positive has been like, you know what? This was some bullshit. But this has actually helped helped me in a sort a sort of way. It helped me advance. It helped me to get. It was some bullshit, but you know what? It worked out, and it made me a little bit better as a professional. Then you got your other bullshit, which is negative, which is like, man, this was some straight bullshit. This shouldn't happen to anybody, type of thing. So, what would be what what would be a positive bullshit moment for you? We'll, we'll let we'll, we'll let Omar go first. Um, my positive bullshit moment actually was. <clears throat> not succeeding in a timely fashion with the, with the technology, right? And having to go to clients and go to my investors and go to my, actually my community and, and tell them like, hey, my business, we could do all the name when this a big fortune 500 company, right? And, you know, we had everything going. We had, a, we had numerous means and we kind of put things out there, put pictures and it didn't happen in the time that it was supposed to happen. It kept getting, it's going to happen this week. It's going to happen this week. And it, it made me, realize that you know you're going to go through stuff that's outside of your control and sometimes if you can't control it continue to push because if you're waiting for somebody else to make shit happen for you you'll never make it right so it put me in the mindset that regardless of what obstacles throw my way and if i can control it and if i can't it don't matter find what you can do to keep pushing forward and perseverance to get to where you're trying to get to and that will happen for me so knowing that we had things and we were promised things and the calendar was delayed and we put information out and it made us look bad and it's you know people have to question our credibility and 
you know, losing faith in us, it made me realize that regardless of what you go through, don't lay down, man. Pick that shit up and continue to build. Because once you have something of value, the people will come. And all the people that didn't believe or lost faith or was all that stuff, you don't worry about that. Just know if you're true to yourself and you're building something great, man, cancel all that noise, right? But yep. know that things might not go as the way you think that should go or if certain deadlines or certain things were said to you, anything could change. So don't let that stuff bother you. Continue to push. We got one life to live, man. If you don't live that shit to your fullest, you're not going to have a great life. You know, forget right. all that shit. And, and I, I'm going to say, too, like, even the negative stuff, bro, don't nothing bother me because I don't let stuff, like, we could be savvy humans, right? But at the end of the day, it don't kill you. It won't kill you. We're going to have another day to be great at what we do. But that was it for me, just understanding, like, when you're dealing with big businesses and you're the small fry and, you know, you, you think you're there and you just walk through the door just to find out there's another door in front of you and it's, you can't unlock that shit. So you got to keep pushing, man, and find a damn key. Once you get that key, you made it. And that, like, a lot of projects don't understand that because they don't even, can't even get in the front door. They lying to people that we did this, we did that. It ain't as easy as you think. We just can't go into these big dollar, billion dollar, trillion dollar companies. Like, hey, work with us. They're like, who the hell are you? <laughs> Show and build and prove who you are and have great people like Jason and David and Dirk and Antonio and the other Jason. You know, those guys that have done this at the high level. And like I said, everything that we said is all facts. Questions we can show and prove everything that we talked about from any company you might have heard to companies you might, don't even know about to all that stuff. All them to say, guys, keep pushing, man, because at the, in the face of adversity, man, those who can't make it, I don't have the mental fortitude, you won't make it in this business. Like, game of life. And that's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Jason, what would be your positive bullshit? Moment? Man, I got so many. Dude, I could fill up three hours with all the crazy and funny stories. And most of them you would not even believe. Because when, when you, when you, I was in a tech startup in the early 2000s. I'm not saying it was all like Wolf of Wall Street, but have you ever watched Wolf of Wall Street? I love that you, movie. You, My you, wife loves it. Brother, you would not even believe when I watched Wolf of Wall Street, I was like, man, the stuff you can't do anymore in a company, you, <laughs> oh, man. But anyways, I'll give you, maybe I'll give you a, I'll give you a tame story, but one that's kind of a value proposition. So okay. in my early career, I was selling voice over IP and I know people are like, what the hell's voice over IP? Voice over IP is how everybody communicates now today. Nobody knows it's called voice over IP. It's voice over internet protocol. It's sending data over, it's packetizing your voice and sending it over the internet IP. And that's how you receive your, your voice on your cell phones and all that. What a, anyways, back in the day when we first started, our partners, were, we were partnering with Cisco and we were providing that technology to the small to medium sized businesses. It was back when nobody believed the technology existed. So we'd have to go in and sell it. And people would be like, man, that that's a lie, man. That technology does not exist. That's not true. That's not how it works. Like that was my whole beginning, of my whole career, trying to convince them that, hey, this works. And I kind of feel like I'm, you know, in a situation now where we're doing such an advanced technology that I think sometimes people think it's a little bit far out there. But I remember one day I picked up the phone, and this was when I was a young sales rep. And um, this guy started saying, this guy called me up and said, hey. I never heard of you guys before, but um, man, I, I, I'm with this company. And then I told them that I didn't, I, I wanted to just think about it. They were trying to get me to re-sign up my contract and I wanted to think about it. And they started just bashing your company and, and, and just going wild on how terrible of a company you are. It was fake technology. It didn't work. And he's like, I'll be honest with you. I never heard of you guys. I didn't even know you guys existed. So I looked you guys up and I'm calling you right now. And so um, I ended up telling him a little bit about the company and, and you know, what we did and technology. And he's like, he goes, you mind out coming out here and just talking to me for a little while? And just, I want to see what you guys do. So, I, you know, I had an opening that day. I went out there at one o'clock, closed the deal right then and there. Boom. So wow. started out, it started out some BS, you know, and had had and the bs wasn't necessarily i was the 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 beneficiary of the bs uh -huh. but like we had such a strong value prop it was a technology that we knew 100 percent work because one the technology we knew and the team we had a significant team but we also like our tech partners were massive cisco systems was our major tech partner for back in the day and 
And um, so it's, it's a very similar situation here. Now we can't talk about some of our partners because of NDA yeah. stuff and all that, but like, I feel like I'm in a, in that kind of a situation now. Um, and I tell Omar, like, this is my last, this is going to be mm. our last ride. We're done after this. Like we know where this train is going. I mean, if you ever watch back to the future where that train just all of a sudden just bolts in the sky, like yep. we, we, we talk about it. We know where this is going. This is, this is legit our last, we're done after this because we know where this is going to go. And it's not going to be a five, 10 year plan. Like, you know, I'm, we'll see where I'm at in a few months. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I'll still be here, but like, you know, this is, this, this is going to be big for all of us. And, and, it's to the and 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 if I'm just being totally transparent, it'll be one of those situations where, um, you know, I like I'll, I'll like what I'm doing so much that I probably will work for, you know, there could be a potential point where I just don't care. I'll just work for free because I like doing what I'm doing. You know what I mean? It's it'll be in that scenario where I don't have to work anymore. I'm done, but like I still want to be part like, of like it, a so. consultant type, you know. Not even that, man. We're I just, you know, like I really feel passionate about getting this technology installed and, and helping people save lives. And then also like it's such an advanced technology, like you pretty much drop the mic after every every meeting that you do. You, I feel like we're dropping the mic and walking away. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. seriously think it's a mic drop. You yeah. know, we go into the spaces and we talk in Telegram and, you know, then after we, after we do this amazing spiel, like all the stuff we talk to you here about, you know, afterwards they're going to be like, when Coinbase. <laughs> 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 That's what they'll say. But like in the real world, like when we're going out and meeting, like when we leave, man, these people, they're, we're having to pick up people's jaws and put them back on their you know, we're, we're That's dropping amazing. the mic. So it's, it's, it's a funny, it's just a funny uh, experience. So we know where we're going. We know where this team is, you know, is going. We know where the tech is going to go. Uh, we're excited to be part of it. We can't wait to start rolling out all the different news and all the different things and partnerships. And, you know, like, how, you know, how many meme tokens do you know are going to be on national news, you know, being reported on the national news because of, you know, this partnership or that partnership or this system or that system or whatever. So I'm just saying, and I'm also saying you never know what you're going to wake up to. So like, you know, yeah, bro. I don't want to say make sure your bags are packed, but like I don't have me, Omar, the rest of the team, we don't have control over some of that anymore. Right. Because too many, too many people that have too big of eyeballs are already looking. So absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So so on the flip side, what what's uh what what would be what's just your guys' uh negative bullshit where it's like, you know what, this was this was some straight bullshit. Um this this should not ever happen again. <laughs> Omar probably has a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Omar can take up mine too. Yeah, so mine is just now let's be quick. Mine is like having people that you, you think believe in you show that they really don't, you know, and it comes to light that you know what they say to you is not how they truly feel. I just tell people just be a hundred with me, man. I'm 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 a cool guy, like I'm a grown man, I'm old man, like just be real because when they come back to me, I have to question you as a human and I don't want to deal with you. You're going to, you're going to feel that because I, I know it's not genuine, but also people that, are, that take advantage of other people like DB, you know, I don't like people. It, no, I'm being real. Like, you know, yeah, absolutely. Or harm people for financial gain. Just do things the right way. You would be blessed, man. And that's why I tell people like, if you're going through situations, don't lie and, and that, they're not just calling on him, but just anybody that might have a problem, whether it's narcotic or anything, right? Seek help because you have great people that really like you and will do anything to help you. Just don't take advantage of good people because I'm a firm believer the energy that you put out, the energy that you're going to get back. And I mean, that we, this is part of life, right? So, and trust me, you don't want to deal with certain people, man. You know, we got some very connected people all over the world and, you know, Granted, we're not like that. I'm not saying that we are, but you, you can't do that to people, man. Like, just, just do things the right way and, you know, treat people how you want to be treated. And if you got issues or you need help with something, man, definitely, you know, you got people that can help you. But also, people. Also, man, just be honey. With every, if you how you truly feel about somebody, let them know. Don't go to the third party or somebody else that can't fix the problem. Go straight to the source. Like, if Jason to call me about anything or vice versa, 
uh, my guy Patrick, you know, he's uh, my guy Ross. Uh, me and Dave, we could talk about anything. We know at the end of the day, it's, it's all love. I'm quite sure with you, uh, bro, we, we can have conversations because I know on that level, you're going to be a straight shooter. Just be a straight shooter. I ain't got to hide about nothing. I don't lie about nothing. I tell people what it is. And I don't hooked up and took care of a lot of damn people. But I want people to pay it for it. Be honest with yourself. Like, have I done stuff for you? Then let that be known, too. Don't pick and yeah. choose. Don't go your way. Then you want to paint a false narrative that, you know, puts your agenda that you had to make people feel that you feel the same way. No, nah, man, we don't rock like that. So this, those two things, man, just be, uh, just be stand up, stand 10 toes down with anything you do in life. And two, don't, don't scam people or take advantage of people, especially women or females or people who you think you can bully and intimidate. You got to see one of us in real life. So, and that, that's facts. So I'm just letting you know. And Omar can zoom in on your house. I've, I've seen the text. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know people kind of think I'm joking, but I actually have seen it. <laughs> Dude, we had this technology, and I'm gonna let Jason go. But dude, like dude, we were dealing with like a top military con contractor. Like people just don't think, dude. Like we could Derek can pick up the phone. We know people are the damn DOJ, man. It's that serious, right? And you really think we out here trying to scam people for a few thousand dollars? Get the hell out of here! <laughs> Get out of here! Derek was a former police captain, bro. Are you people crazy? You want me to just walk to jail and do something crazy? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Derek would put a, a butt whooping on us personally if that that was the case. Derek, <laughs> due diligence on all of us. Let's be real. Yeah, and that, that's another thing, you know, especially when you when you're dealing with 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 companies and other companies, you know, it takes time to 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 come to agreements to have you know certain things signed and stuff like that. A lot of people don't understand what you know how much it takes just because they're, they're so used to oh. Oh well, well, Shih Tzu Inu done partnered with with Turd Coin, you know. Oh, you know, but you know it, that's not a real partnership. They just they just help each other, you know, type of thing. You know, when you're talking about legit businesses partnering it, it, in name, like going public saying we're partnered, there's contracts, there's agreements, there's NDAs, there's a whole lot of shit that's got to be signed, verified, and re-signed again. Before they can come out public, like, all right, so we're partnered, boom. Because, you know, just like just like I tell everybody, you know, I do everything I can to protect my name, protect my business. All these businesses, if they're legit running businesses, they're going to do everything they can to, to protect. And that includes, hey, you know what? Uh, I found a red flag in your company. I don't want to partner with you, but, you know, it's not going to work out. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's just got to be like that. It's all business. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't understand what happens behind closed doors, you know what I mean? What it takes to run a business and to keep a business successful and to keep a, and to keep your ass out of jail. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So J Jason, what, what, what is your negative? This, this is a, and this will be a good segue too. So, um, you know, one of the things that's some negative mega negative bullshit is just the nefarious activities that are in the crypto space. And it affects the and it's affect the sky community. And, and I'm going to give you just a blunt example. We see people and trust me, we do this. We all do this. You know, when you're in a token that's uh, along, a there are many times where you're like, hey, I can get out of this token, go degen, hopefully make some money and come back and have a better position. Well, we've seen way too many instances where people would do that and then they would get into a token and get rugged. And so it affects, it doesn't just affect them. If you pull a big old chunk in a token, that's only a $600,000 market cap. And then, you know, it, it affects the entire community and sentiment. And it's and I'm not blaming it on individuals' fault. I'm you know I'm blaming it on the nefarious activity and the general ecosystem. And so that's so that was frustrating to see that because it hurts you know existing community members. It hurts that individual. They just now now they don't have a position in a in a in a very good opportunity going forward, and they got their money stolen by a nefarious actor in the space. Yeah. So you know we put our heads together and we said you know what. Why, why, why are we not creating uh, a, a meme token with advanced utilities and, and, um, and, and giving the opportunity for people to play in a safe meme token environment? And so then we, we created the uh, Blockpools token. 
and we have this massive ecosystem that we've built out. We've got this massive plan. We've actually rolled out this plan to actual business uh, folks, the same folks that we're talking to on Thursday. They they know about this this, this plan. Um, we've we've actually pitched this idea to VCs, and we talked about our strategy for growth, going into different networks and building out on different networks. And, um, and the feedback on has been incredibly positive. Um, as a matter of fact, the feedback was like, damn, how did you guys come up with this strategy? And we get pitched, you know, and this is, we're talking about real VCs, real, real firms. They're like, we get pitched web three and crypto projects all the time. And I can't think of one that actually has a game plan of onboarding quote normies into the web3 space like you guys have. And so, you know, we've got this token it's called Blockfuls token. It's a meme token, but we've got a lot behind it, a lot of uh, growth and strategy that we have planned to implement and um, you know, our, our goal is to go big with it as well. And so, um, you know, we've gotten a lot of good feedback out of it, but we we built it out of because of the nefarious activity that's that's in the space and all the bullshit that's in the space. And so, yeah, yeah if it, I would recommend checking it out, um, and um, you know, consider joining as as well. I heard that, man. I heard that. Well, hey, look, I really appreciate you guys coming on, giving us the four one one on yourselves and the companies. You know what I mean? That is, you know, people are looking for you know, legit shit all, especially right now, you know, this is a different, this is a different time in crypto. This is a, like, I, I really believe that like, this is one of those, you know, where we've come to this moment where it's going to have this big shift in how the industry itself begins to operate. And we are, we are in the beginning phases of that shift, you know, and, you know, it's, it's just time for really time for people to really educate themselves on cryptocurrency, what it is, how you know and 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 a lot of the stuff even just the basics of you know wallet creation of you know uh you know how to operate these different swaps and one of the biggest things is looking at these uh like like the scans all the scans learn how to learn how to look at this blockchain because this is not going away it, it, i don't care what what you know joe schmo down down the road done told you that it's a scam Hey, I'm telling you what, blockchain technology is not going away. Uh, the 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 paper is, you know, this currency that we are tr that is damn near worthless now is yeah. going away. Everything is going digital. Yeah. Start begin to learn how to navigate this digital world, or you're going to fall behind, and you, you it's just you're you're not going to survive it. Period. You're you're going to continue failure after failure, and if you're steadily listening to listening to people that are failing, yeah, it's it, you're you're just going to be the next one. It's the, hey, there's a saying. Hey, you know what? Hey, if you sit in a group with ten millionaires, guess what? You're going to be the next millionaire. You know what I'm saying? It's that type of thing. You know, learn what you're doing, learn how to navigate the space, learn how to navigate at this technology before it leaves you behind. Yeah. Well said. So totally is, agree. Like I said, hey, well, once again, man, I really appreciate you guys. The, man, this is a, an amazing discussion. We're going to have to continue. Man, we're going to definitely, definitely run this back, do it again sometime, man. Look, hey, for everybody that's watching, going to watch, you know, this is some, uh, there's been a lot of amazing information put out uh, about Sky and what they have going on. Uh, if you missed any of it, guess what? Hey, look, this is recorded. Rewind the tape. Uh, if you like to listen for your listening pleasures, this is also on, will be, the audio will be posted on pretty much every, uh, uh, listening platform that you, Apple, you know, all that stuff, iHeartRadio, whatever the case may be, wherever your favorite listening pleasure is, definitely check this out. There was a lot of information given out. Um, you know, this, this team, I'll tell you what, I've been following this team for a very long, what, it's been two years now, two? Yeah. Yeah, it's been two, and I'm tell you what, hey, it's been quiet, but hey, the growth is there. And if you haven't seen it, you're just blind to the bullshit because <laughs> because I'm gonna tell you what, hey, start paying attention. You, hey, look, you got to pay attention to what's going on with the ones that have been around for longer. It, 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 
at this point longer than if they've been around for longer than a year, you need to take a hard look at what they're doing right. Just just keep that in mind. And especially hey, for, for all these little tidbits that's been dropped through this thing. Boy, hey, this ain't financial advice, but it's advice. You go do some research and uh get some education about yourself. <laughs> So with that being said, hey, once again, appreciate everybody. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. We're gonna watch it. We're gonna do this again sometime, and we are out of here. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man. I still go, 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 go. It's a lot of sell every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Put a system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit. Got a mind switch out of me. You better watch out if you're enemies. A road ahead of full prophecy to be the greatest.